Everyone, welcome to today's lesson. Uh, my name is Wes. This is Interactive English and the channel, it's, it's just all about helping you practice and improve your English skills. If this is your first time here, please let me know in the comments, in the chat. Love hearing from new people and I also enjoy uh, hearing from people who regularly watch our videos as well. Uh, great to see so many familiar faces. I have, I think it's a fun lesson and it's a useful lesson, especially for your comprehension. So I'm going to talk to you about idioms. We're going to talk about some advanced idioms. And I put the, um, the flag from the United States because I think these are idioms that people will use in the US. That, that does not mean that they're only used in the United States. I think many of these idioms are pretty common across all English varieties. Um, if you're talking about British English or in Canada, Australia, uh, South Africa, I think many people may use these idioms. But the reason why I say they're advanced is because they're not, um, they are a little more difficult. I think the meaning of these idioms are very different from their individual words. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to practice. I'm going to give you, it's, it's kind of a quiz lesson. So I'm going to give you some questions and I want you to try to answer and think about the, the idiom in English. And it, this is going to be challenging. It will be difficult. I hope that you learn some new idioms today. And the one thing I want to say is this will be very helpful for your comprehension. I'm, I'm teaching you these idioms not so that, oh, I have to go out there and use them if you can, if you find yourself in the appropriate situation, that's great. But I think it's really useful for your comprehension because you will hear these idioms from time to time if you're in a conversation or watching a movie, TV show, listening to a podcast or an audio book. These are idioms that you may hear and it's really helpful for your conversation. So. This will be challenging. I'm just going ahead and throw that out there. Uh, I want to give some quick hellos to uh, people that are here with me. Hello, Lolly Gatrudis. Uh, great to see some members. Excellent. Um, Bamba Zanat, Karina, uh, Arafin, Takayo. Hey, Takayo, how are you? Um, and I, I want you guys to participate throughout this lesson, and I will give you some questions give you a moment to think about the answer, and then of course I will tell you the answer. So let's go ahead and start, and we're gonna practice with some of these idioms. The first way that we're going to do this is, I'm going to give you the meaning of the idiom, and then I'm going to give you a picture that to, to kind of help you out. And I want you to just write the idiom. What idiom am I talking about in English? So the, the first one is this right here to do or say something that lacks evidence or support. And you see the picture, use that picture. Hopefully it'll help you. Again, I know this is difficult. I know this is challenging, but just bear with me. And I will show you the idiom and then the meaning as well so you can kind of think about it. But if you're thinking about like, you're, you're saying something that lacks evidence or support, Often I think people will use this idiom at the beginning of a sentence when they want to make a guess about something, all right? And the picture there is, well, you see a bird that is out on a limb. The key word there is limb. That's what I was hoping that you would think of, but I, I know that that, uh, that may be very difficult because the idiom that I'm talking about is to go out on a limb. And if you say that you're going to like go out on a limb, you're saying something or doing something that lacks evidence. Let me give you um, more of an explanation. I told you that somebody would use this when they're about to maybe make a guess. They don't really have much evidence, but they're going to make a guess and they'll say, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that, mm, and then they share their opinion. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that he was lying, all right? I don't have evidence, but I'm going to suggest that and you'd say, I'm going to go out on a limb, all right? So that's a good idiom, um, that's a good idiom to learn. You go out on a limb, you're saying something, not with much evidence. And remember, I think it's mostly, it's often used in that context. People would say, well, I'm gonna go out on a limb and 
say whatever guess it is. All right, excellent. Um, I hope some of you got that one. Let's look at this one. The next one, hopefully this is a little easier. I think the picture, um, you could probably perhaps guess it a little more. So is to greatly annoy or upset someone. Use that picture, think about what's happening in the picture. There's a car driving and there is a, what, what is that? Those are bricks, but I was trying to go for a wall, all right? So think about what idiom that would be in English if you are uh, greatly annoying someone or perhaps you're upsetting uh, this person. You could say that this person is what? Excellent. Uh, Ahmad, ADR, uh, Anna, perfect. We're talking about driving someone up the wall. To drive someone up the wall means that you are, well, you're very annoyed. And you would say that, uh, like I said, you could um, say this person is driving me up the wall. So if somebody is driving you up the wall, then they are annoying you. Um, and upsetting you. Excellent. Gertrudis, uh, uh, see what else we have? Uh, voice, uh, Ramon, excellent. I'll try to get in as many shout outs as I can. And again, if you're just joining us, we are doing a little bit of an idiom quiz and these are more advanced idioms. And I think it's definitely a little more advanced in the way that I'm trying to quiz you on these. So again, I'm giving you the meaning when someone is so frustrated or annoyed, they can no longer cope or they can no longer deal with this situation. And you would describe this and somebody would, they would say this idiom right here. And it, that's what it means. And use this picture uh, to help you guess what the idiom is. That's a picture, that's a rope. All right. Um, so, I just told you it's a rope. That is part of the idiom. So think about that. Hopefully that may help you, especially if you've heard this idiom before. Um, you, some, you're frustrated, you can no longer cope. Excellent, yes. Uh, Ramon, uh, Sid, what somebody would say is that they are at the end of their rope. So if, so, so if I were to tell you, I'm at the end of my rope, it means that I'm so frustrated, I can no longer deal with this situation. And often I think people may use this if you're maybe having an argument or a disagreement with somebody, you're very frustrated. Uh, perhaps parents with children, they're, they're very frustrated with their children and you could say they, they can't cope. They'd say, ah, oh, I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. So it's, in that case, people might use it as kind of a warning that if you're frustrated with somebody and you're telling them, look, I'm at the end of my rope, that you're you're really about at this point that you're no longer to cope. Excellent. Um, so are you ready? Uh, these are some other good, I see some other good and uh, idioms, guesses that people are using. Here, here's another one. And then I'm going to switch it up the way that I'm asking you this. So here's the, the meaning of the idiom. And there are some pictures to help you. So if uh, you are talking about personal issues in front of other people that are not involved. So really, if you're talking about your personal issues that in front of other people, and you don't need to be doing this, what would you, how would, how would you describe that situation? And you have a picture right there of laundry, all right? Dirty laundry. So that, that is your clue, that is your hint, uh, dirty laundry, and people are talking about their issues in front of other people. And I think often people would use it to tell somebody not to do this. So perhaps you're at a party with a group of people and you're talking, maybe you're having a little bit of an argument with your friend, your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, and you, you start talking about your personal issues, your relationship, whatever. And the other person would say, look, we don't need to, let's, let's not do this. Let's not do this. So often um, you may use this with the negative. Excellent. Um, we have some excellent uh, MZZ. 
Uh, you guys are close. Uh, Michael, perfect. The, the idiom is to air out one's dirty laundry. To air out your dirty laundry is if you are talking about your personal issues in front of other people. And l like I said, I think you would think somebody's in a group and two people are talking and somebody is really, they're talking about their personal issues with maybe this other person. And they say, look, let's, let's not air out our dirty laundry or you don't need to air out your, your dirty laundry. Um, ex excellent. Yeah. So you, I think you might hear it used with that word. Let's like, let's not air out our dirty laundry. We don't need to do this. Stop airing out <laughs> your dirty laundry. Excellent. Uh, Maggie, perfect. How are you? Excellent. Great to see you. Uh, so those are, again, um, a couple of idioms that we've talked about so far. So I've given you uh, to go out on a limb. You're kind of g saying something without evidence. We can also drive someone up the wall, which makes them a little crazy. You, if you want to say that you can no longer cope, you're at the end of your rope. And uh, to air out your dirty laundry is talking about your personal issues. So now we're gonna switch it up. Oh, I have some more idioms for you, uh, but the way that I'm going to do it this time, now I'm, I'm going to give you uh, like a conversation and I'm gonna give you a blank. So I'm gonna give you the context and then I'm gonna give you one word which uh, is a hint to what the idiom is. So let me show you, that'll be a better way to explain it. So think about, the, here's this situation right here. One person, there's a blank because this person is using the idiom. The key word is speak. So this, that word is part of the idiom. And the other person says, hey, Tom, we were just talking about you. So think about what, what idiom might this person be using? It's really, um, it's, kind of, it's an expression that people would use in English to when this situation occurs. And I think we can all relate to this situation. So. What is, what's this first person saying right here? You know the situation, somebody, Tom, this guy, he just arrived and they were just, they were just talking about him and you would say this, excellent. Um, Julio, Lulu, <laughs> perfect. Um, Ramon, Julie, uh, Gertrudis, Lolly. I think, I, I think you may have heard this uh, expression before, speak of the devil. So I told you, I think we can all relate to it. We're having a conversation, talking about somebody, that person just arrives or perhaps they call and you could say, speak of the devil, which refers to, it's used informally in speech to say that a person was being talked about and then they suddenly appear. They appear or it could be like a phone call that their, their presence is felt, excellent. The next one that I have for you is this. And this one I think is a little more, it's not as common, but I, it's good, again, it's good for your comprehension. I told you guys, I think this, if anything, the expectation is not that you're going to learn these and just go out and start using them, but so that you understand them if you happen to hear them uh, in another conversation or movie TV show. So this, they say, I understand it's a big risk, but we need to, mm, that's the idiom, the key word, that I'm giving you is caution. So you, the, the context is they're going to take some risk and they're following it up with this idiom. What uh, idiom am I talking about? Keyword is caution. All right. So <laughs> excellent. Uh, Ramon, very, very quick on that answer. Perfect. Uh, Ahmed, Yes, the answer is to throw caution to the wind. If you're saying that you're going to throw caution to the wind, it's basically saying that you're going to, you're, you're not going to be careful. And in that situation, if there's something that's a risk, then perhaps you're not going to be careful and you would throw caution to the wind. So to throw caution to the wind, to give you the meaning is to behave in a way that is not considered sensible or careful to throw caution to the wind. All right, now let's look at this next one. Here's another conversation that these, um, these three ladies are having. 
she says, I need your help finding my ring. So the ring is lost. It's so valuable to me. And then she would say this idiom right here. So based on this context, this situation, I need your help. They're, they're looking for this ring. That will, that's what I was going to say. They're going to look for it. The ring is lost. They're going to look for it. It's very valuable. It's very important to her. And before they start looking for the ring, perhaps she uses this idiom right here. Um, so what do you think? Uh, this one, this context, I, it's you, well, I don't want to give you, <laughs> I don't want to give you the meaning. I told you that I was just going to try to give you an example uh, uh, of a situation. And the key word is stone. All right. So what phrase would you say? It's an idiom and you would tell somebody this stone and well, it's using the word stone and you're trying to, to find it. All right. You need to find this. Um, all right. You guys are close. Um, close. It's more of a, a command. So think of it that way. You're going to tell somebody uh, a command using stone. I think Ahmed, MZZ, you guys were close. But the idiom that I'm uh, referring to is when you would tell somebody, leave no stone unturned. So most of the time, I think you're going to hear it as a command. If you're telling a, a group of people or another person to look for something carefully, really look hard, and you say, look everywhere, leave no stone unturned. So in this situation, I was trying to think that, well, the ring is valuable, it's very precious, they're going to look for it, and she might say, leave no stone unturned. It means to do everything you can to achieve a good result, but I think it's, it's typically used in the context of looking for something. You're trying to find it and you would leave no stone unturned. This could be um, an example as to when you might hear this. Perhaps you're watching some TV show that involves uh, the police and a criminal and they're looking for the criminal, they're looking for the thief and they need to find this person and the, they may tell the group of police officers, leave no stone unturned. We need to find uh, the thief. Uh, the next one that I have for you, again, is this situation. Um, <laughs> this, this person right here saying, I don't want to hear a long explanation. Please just, what? <laughs> and then that's, that's the idiom. The key word is chase. Okay? So think about it. Again, think about the situation. What do you think? the idiom, uh, the English idiom is, and maybe maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. Again, I hope that, that you are learning some new idioms right now. That's what I hope, and I don't expect you to remember all of them. I think when it comes to idioms, it's just good to get exposure. It's good to become a little bit familiar with them because over time, as you're uh, listening to music, podcasts, watching TV, you get that exposure to the language. You're just going to hear these idioms and then you'll uh, be able to remember them. Well, I think you guys, wow, you guys rock this one, okay. So I don't wanna hear a long explanation. Please just cut to the chase. All right, excellent. I gotta give some shout outs there. Um, excellent, Mathalite, Anna, Julio, uh, Anuat, Chris, uh, Stella, I'm trying to find some new names I haven't said, Abraham, uh, Mike, perfect. So uh, Gertrudis, Maggie, cut to the chase. It means that you're, you're telling somebody quick, like come to the point. What, it, what are you trying to say? What are you trying, what point are you trying to make? Cut to the chase. All right. So we've had, uh, let me back up and review some of these. So the, this last part we've talked about speak of the devil. I told you that it's used informally to say that some, somebody suddenly appears and then you could use this phrase. And typically it's used as a standalone phrase. Somebody, oh, speak of the devil. And then maybe you start talking about, um, you just start having a conversation. Or if you want to throw caution to the wind, you're behaving in a way that's not careful and somebody might throw caution to the wind. Or to leave no stone unturned. I, I said that you're looking for something um, and, and you want to have that good result and you might, again, use it as a command and you're telling a group of people, we need to find this thing, leave no stone unturned. 
And we just talked about this cut to the chase. I think this is a common one because uh, sometimes like I'm, I'm a person that may not come directly to the point and somebody would say this to me like, Wes, just cut to the chase. All right, tell us, tell us what you're thinking. All right, so uh, I, I have more idioms for you. Again, I wanna keep going, uh, a little more practice, but I'm trying to switch it up in the way that we're practicing these. And now it's going to be even a little more difficult. So uh, this time I'm going to give you, um, I'm gonna give you the situation. And I want you just to listen to what I'm saying, listen to the situation. And then I may give you a, a keyword that has that that the idiom has and you can try to guess it okay so in this first one uh it's talking about a situation and that somebody is not speaking directly all right and maybe another person is just saying look just tell me what's on your mind please cut to the chase give it to me straight and they might be telling this person stop stop doing this thing and that's the idiom, stop, mm. all right, stop speaking indirectly. Instead of saying that, they're going to use this idiom and say, stop what? Just give it to me straight, stop what? So the idiom is really when um, somebody is speaking indirectly. But I told you that I think it's used when, you people may use this when you're telling another person to stop doing that. And they say, don't do, like, stop doing this. Um, and you guys, wow, excellent. Uh, Stella, Julie, um, Ramon, Chris, you, <laughs> you guys got it. To beat around the bush. So if somebody's doing that, again, I tend to do that and not come, uh, and somebody would say, Wes, cut to the chase. Stop beating around the bush. Just, just say whatever it is you want to say. So... I think that's a, a good way to remember it and a good way to kind of listen for it. Somebody might tell another person, stop beating around the bush. You need to speak uh, directly. Excellent. Uh, yes, Gertrudis, Lolly, perfect. Um, Maggie, you guys rock that one. So let me give you another situation and I'll give you another word that the idiom has. So this situation, um, you're going to do something for another person. Perhaps you're going to get a birthday present for your friend. And then you talk to your other friend and they say, oh, I have the perfect present for, for this person. Um, I'm going to get them um, some shirt that they always wanted. And your friend says, well, I already bought that shirt. I already, I'm going to give, I already, uh, I, I'm already giving that birthday present. So you have to find somebody else. And you say, oh no, you did what? So it's kind of like they, they took your idea a little bit. And if you want to use an idiom that they've taken your idea and it's maybe a good idea and now you cannot get, you cannot have success. You're not going to get praise for this great idea. You'd say, well, that person did what? And think of the word steal. That would be the key word that I'm going to give you in this context, in this situation. So if somebody, they, they took your idea for a birthday present and you say, oh my goodness, you stole what? All right. And I think this is a good idiom. I think it is a little, I guess you could say it's fairly common. Um, but again, the meaning is very different from the individual words. Yes, excellent. Uh, Sid, Anna, uh, Gary, uh, sorry, I've mispronounced names. I'm talking about the idiom to steal someone's thunder. So in that context, that situation that I gave you right here, um, these people are talking and this person says, I was going to get her that same birthday present. You totally stole my thunder. You took like my idea. So in this case, it's not something that is really, you're kind of just saying that maybe playfully, perhaps it wasn't planned. So maybe there's not, they're not going to be angry, but perhaps if it, you could talk about a situation which would make somebody angry if somebody steals your idea at work and they take all the credit, they get all the praise and you say, this person, they stole my thunder. So to steal someone's thunder is you are preventing them from 
um, that praise or that success to steal someone's thunder. I think I showed you guys the, the last one. Yes, to beat around the bush, you're avoiding talking to someone. I think most people do it because it's unpleasant or it's difficult to talk about, so they might beat around the bush. Um, we just talked about steal one's thunder. Let me give you uh, uh, another situation, um, the next one. So this would be a situation in which Think about you are competing in some kind of competition. And before the competition begins, the, the rules change. And because of that, you are surprised, you're confused, you're, you don't know what to do. And I could say, wow, this really what? And the key word that I would give you is loop. All right, think about that situation that I just described with the idiom has the word loop in it. So if something, if, if something confuses you, it distracts you. Um, and I gave you that situation about perhaps somebody changing the rules at the last minute and you're telling somebody, well, that really what? And the idiom has the word loop in it. Okay. So I told you again, this is definitely, um, it's definitely an advanced quiz because now I'm just, you're really just having to listen to me give you the information and then try to figure it out. All right. Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> Irvin, excellent. Some of you are very close. Um, what I'm talking about, what you would say is this, here's the situation. At the last minute, they changed the rules of the competition and it really threw our team for a loop. So if something throws you for a loop, it kind of, it, it confuses you to the point where it's like, well, maybe you, you don't know what to do. So I know some of you had mentioned that you're out of the loop. That is another idiom, but if somebody is out of the loop, it means that they are unaware of some information. In this case, you are aware of the information, but it just confuses you, it distracts you, and you, you don't know what to do, you could say it, it threw me for a loop. And typically, I think you would use it in a situation in which you are, you are temporarily unfocused, and you're not sure what to do, and then you, you refocus, and you're able to, in this case, like um, you're able to compete in the competition, and you're, you're just going to do the best you can. But for a quick, for a brief moment, you were, th you were thrown for a loop. So I really think it's often used to describe a temporary situation where something is just shocking and it just, like it says, it upsets you, it confuses you because something unexplained happens. And I tried to give you that in the context of somebody changes the rules and it's, it's unexpected and that may throw you for a loop. So um, it's, a, it's a good idiom. The next one, uh, the next situation uh, that I have for you is if, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I can relate to this. Uh, my wife and I, we can relate to this, that over time, maybe your place starts to get a little messy and you, you know that you need to clean up. And as it begins to get messier and messier, you could say, well, this is really starting to what? And the, the key word that I'll give you that's hand, hand. That's part of the idiom. So think about that situation that I just told you that uh, your place, it's just over time. You haven't cleaned in a while. Everybody's very busy. It's getting messier and messier. And you say, oh goodness, this is really, uh, this is really starting to what? So it's a situation that it's, it's getting really chaotic. It's almost getting too much. And you might use this idiom, has the word hand in it. Um, what do you think? Th that situation. And, th and this is something that I, I like to use this idiom um, because I think you could use it to describe a lot of situations that are just too chaotic. And you say, all right, I need to do something. This is starting to, hmm. All right, excellent. Uh, I think you guys, Got that one, Erwin, um, uh, Ramon, uh, well, thank you, Mustafa, <laughs> Sid, uh, Darren, uh, Aman. Uh, I'm talking about 
to, here it is, let me show you the situation. So somebody might say, we really need to clean up our place. This mess is starting to get out of hand. And say, yeah, you're right. So in that case, uh, if something is getting out of hand, it's getting out of control, it's a situation, it becomes chaotic, and sometimes it's un unmanageable. So you could say it's getting out of hand. So let's review those um, that I just went over. Uh, so to avoid talking about something, because it's difficult or unpleasant, is to beat around the bush. Oftentimes I think somebody might, you might be telling somebody to stop doing this. You're like, just tell me, just be honest, tell me the truth, stop beating around the bush. Uh, we have to steal someone's thunder is like your, um, somebody takes your idea, somebody takes your credit, your praise, they stole your thunder. So it's a great, it's a great idiom. Be careful with that preposition. So if somebody takes your idea, they steal your thunder. If you take their idea, then you steal their thunder. So be careful with that preposition. To throw someone for a loop is when something unexpected happens and you're temporarily upset or confused. And you're like, wow, that, that really threw me for a loop. I wasn't expecting that. It threw me for a loop. And I talked about something that is unmanageable. It gets a little chaotic. Uh, it's difficult to control. You may say, you may say that this is, this is starting to get out of hand. And I think that's a really uh, great one. And I hope that, I hope that you learn some new idioms. And before, before this lesson gets out of hand, I want to make a quick announcement. You guys like what we do, want to show us some love, um, want to uh, sponsor Interactive English uh, with a membership, Patreon links are down below in the description. Great to see some members here uh, today, as well as uh, some patrons, Takayo, uh, Maggie, Lolly, uh, Gertrudis, excellent. Great to see you guys. Uh, happy that you can join me today. So I hope that I hope that you were able to follow. Um, I hope you're able to follow the lesson. I, I hope that it was. E I hope the lesson was easy to follow. That's what I'm trying to say. I hope it was easy to follow. I hope it was under easy to understand. And again, the idea is not for you to just go out and try and start using these idioms. It does take some time to learn idioms and use them in the correct context. It's mostly, I think, for your comprehension because we people use idioms in everyday conversation. So these are idioms that you will hear in, in, in movies, TV shows, podcasts, songs, uh, books, um, because I think many of you out there get exposure to the language in a variety of different ways. Watching YouTube videos, there's many different things you can do. So it's good to try and practice this from time to time. Uh, here is a list. Um, here is a list of the idioms from today's lesson. If you want to take a snapshot, a screenshot of these idioms, go for it. I'm not going to include these idioms in the description. Typically I will do that so people can review, but in this case, it was more of a quiz lesson, so I do not want to give the answers. So here is a list of the idioms that we talked about today. There were 12 in total. I hope that you learned some new ones, and if you enjoyed the lesson, please, hit that like button down below. Um, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I'm just gonna tell you, please hit that like button. Um, and uh, that's, that's really it. I was trying to think of some other idioms that uh, I could use. All right, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna end the lesson because probably I might be starting to drive you guys up the wall. So um, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, some shout outs, Peter, Mawa, Mustafa, um, Amen. Glad it was useful. Excellent. Nabila, uh, Julio, Nekla. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Maggie, Lolly. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, glad you guys could join me. Um, I know it's early for you too, Maggie. That's awesome. Uh, it's impressive. Uh, so Suhana, Mo, Mona, uh, Julio, Gosh, it goes on. I had a lot of people today in class. That's excellent. Um, and I, I think, again, the more the comments, the likes, it really tells me that, uh, okay, I'll, I'll do more lessons like this in the future. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Um, and I will see you guys.